INL started as a dream uh, of uh, creating an international organization between the uh, first two countries no? where we would develop uh, and we would control matter at a nanoscale no? uh, to work in a variety of applications. And we were starting from scratch in a region where we had uh, a playground. So this was an amusement park. No? And uh, we created a team with the support of the governments of Portugal and Spain. What we have today, uh, we are uh, about 15 years after this starting uh, date. Uh, it's a fully working laboratory uh, with uh, over 450 people uh, working inside uh, and using nanotechnology to solve a variety of challenges uh, in uh, several research areas. Uh, uh, going from uh, information and communication technologies to personalized health né? Uh, and food, uh, environmental and energy. Né? So the areas were mostly defined at the beginning, né? but uh, we were lucky that uh, we were able to do a good project, to have a good construction team, so we made, uh, I would say, an excellent facility and uh, we selected a good initial team of people and uh, over the years, uh, a major challenge has always been to, to attract uh, talented scientists uh, to work with us uh, in our uh, strategic areas uh, and uh, to improve and to update né, our uh, scientific facilities. Né? The critical aspect is always people and how to provide uh, people with a good working environment né, and uh, to attract the best people to INL. Here we have a set of uh, excellent micro fabrication facilities, imaging facilities. Né? We can put together people working from uh, uh, let's say electrical engineering, uh, to physics, to bioengineering, to biomedical engineering. Uh, so we put in the same place uh, people working together to, to try to solve complex problems uh, that need uh, scientists to work together. We started with uh, micro and nanoelectronics, uh, where we transferred some technologies from different laboratories. In particular, uh, I myself, uh, I was a person working on uh, magnetic data storage, uh, and I brought that knowledge uh, initially from my PhD, uh, then through IBM, and then through INSCMN, and we brought some of the technology here, and we were able to, working together with the partners, to improve. And uh, as you will see in some of the laboratories today, in particular in uh, areas where we work with uh, either microelectromechanical structures or with uh, uh, magnetic sensing technologies and others, we achieved uh, a level of proficiency which is very good. So we are a well-known laboratory uh, all over the world. Now. And uh, of course, this did not come from nothing. It came from uh, accumulated work né, with uh, some people, but I think we reached uh, a level where we can uh, compete uh, internationally and we can uh, do more than that. We can transfer technology né, to the real world né, and uh, we have been doing it né, at, uh, at different levels, but uh, uh, again, uh, I think this is what uh, I value most. Né? So the way we were able to start from uh, essentially conceptual ideas and bring some of these ideas up uh, in wafer scale, for example, now I'm talking about uh, micro and nanoelectronics, né? to the wafer scale né? and to a point where then some companies can uptake the technology né? and bring it to the market. Né? And as you know, you, you just need to look at uh, your computer or your smartphone, for example. The millions and billions of transistors that we have inside are ever smaller. And uh, we are reaching uh, minimum dimensions in the nanometer scale. 
and uh, this has been ongoing now. When I was in, uh, in university, we were around micron scale, now. so we have gone uh, over almost uh, four orders of magnitude going down in size, now. and uh, we always say that we have barriers to surpass, but we have always managed to surpass the barriers. Now. We will continue down to the manipulation of a few atoms, tens of atoms, when needed. So sometimes it's not needed, but we are always somehow trying to build devices that consume less power, that we can fabricate in smaller dimensions, because it means that we can fabricate more and uh, therefore the price uh, will go down. And the uh, challenges in the physics, in the assembly, are uh, normally tremendous. But this is exactly what excites scientists, no? is that we, are, we never see, I would say, the limit. No? Because now we build, uh, like people, uh, more than 100 years ago, and uh, the periodic table was involved, we deal with the full periodic table. No? And uh, we move beyond because we fabricate out of the periodic table of the elements that we have, we fabricate artificial structures. We fabricate heterostructures, we fabricate, uh, let's say, either molecules or uh, architectures that do not exist in nature in order to, to have properties, to have devices that uh, can respond to some of the challenges that uh, we have. So I think that uh, our major challenge that we have now is to continue providing solutions, uh, sometimes in a breakaway, so in new paradigms, you know, sometimes in continuity, and uh, people only notice you know, when you find a new technology for communications or you find that your computer is doing things for example with the battery that you don't need to charge every day you can only charge you need to charge once per week we are not there yet but these are things that people notice and the same thing in the in the health area we all know that there are a lot of chronic diseases that people are working on and uh, we have uh, neurodegenerative diseases, we have cancer, and there are new ideas being discussed almost every day, but these things take time. And, uh, and I think that uh, we will beat some of these problems. It may take 10, 20, 30 years now, but if we lo look back uh, 100 years ago, people immediately know the difference. They know where we are today, what we have new, and what uh, we had uh, 100 years ago. So our challenge is here. Now we have an excellent facility that allows us to manipulate matter at the nanoscale, at the atomic level, almost, almost. No? And we need to be ever brighter in order to use these facilities to create new science. No? So this is the major responsibility for a facility like INL. So I will return fully to my teaching activities in Technico, in Lisbon, and I will continue my research at Ines Kemen, where I came from, and of course I will keep collaborations with INL. And my area of work, I'm pushing to be able to also to create opportunities for people that we are training to stay in Portugal. And so this meaning creating jobs né, in these uh, scientific and technological areas né, and in such a way that people don't need to leave. And this means also creating jobs outside the academic circuit because the universities are, uh, they receive uh, some of the brighter people, but they are limited in size. So we need to have uh, uh, more companies taking up. Uh, these people. So this is one of the things I would like still to do is to, to help increase the number of people uh, in Portugal working in the areas where we are good in such a way that they can stay here. And this by increasing the labs, né, 
uh, where I'm going uh, to and eventually creating uh, a couple of companies to keep the people working with us.